folks, um, it is a uh, sad day for those of us who knew Dr. Charles Ogletree, longtime Harvard Law professor. Uh, he was the teacher for so many individuals who went through uh, those halls, including President Barack Obama and so many others. He died this morning uh, of Alzheimer's. Uh, well, he, he had been battling early set Alzheimer's for uh, the last several years. Uh, the impact of the scholar uh, is absolutely undeniable. He represented uh, the survivors of the 1921 Tulsa race riot. He represented Anita Hill in her confirmation hearings. He founded the Charles Hamilton Houston Institute at Harvard to honor Charles Hamilton Houston, a 1922 Harvard Law graduate who worked to dismantle Jim Crow laws and spearhead the legal strategy to end segregation in public schools. His contributions extend way beyond uh, the classroom, moderating numerous conversations, um, numerous discussions. Um, we often, of course, uh, had him uh, on uh, my shows over the years. I knew him very well. Uh, the thing about uh, Charles, uh, he hated to be called Chuck. You know, a lot of times you'll have folks uh, like Charles Barkley, who some call him Chuck. And in fact, uh, his email was no Chuck uh, at um, a particular email service. Uh, it is a significant loss when he was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Um, it, it was hard to fathom that somebody who was uh, so eloquent, somebody who was so learned, someone who was so impactful, um, was losing their memory. Uh, I can tell you uh, it was, and I'm, I'm going to find the photo in a second, uh, it was very pa painful when he was honored by the NAACP at the Image Awards a few years ago. And um, in the package that they presented, uh, they didn't mention uh, him being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And uh, he, comes out to the, he, he, he comes out, curtains come up, present him the award, and he says, thank you. And that was it. A lot of people in the audience uh, were sort of like, what's going on? Is he not going to talk longer? Um, but it was the Alzheimer's. In fact, we were in um, we were in the VIP um, gifting suite afterwards, and I spoke to him. We took a photo, and he said to me, all of these people keep coming up to me, congratulations, and I don't know why. He said, but I'll take it. And I want to actually uh, start crying right then because he didn't know. Uh, but folks, if you knew Charles Ogletree, you understood. He was flat out uh, a dominant figure. Um, what's interesting is that tomorrow on Martha's Vineyard, the Charles Hamilton Houston Institute, they're going to have their annual uh, lecture series. He invited me to Martha's Vineyard uh, on two or three occasions to participate in that conversation. Um, again, just an unbelievable human being, a legal scholar, someone who was looked upon and sought out, sought after uh, by so many of our people on some of the most important issues of the second half of the 21st century. Joining us right now uh, is Barbara Arnwine. She is, of course, uh, president and founder of the Transformative Justice Coalition. Also joining us is Tanya Washington Hicks, professor at Georgia State University College of Law in Atlanta. Glad to have both of them with us. Uh, Barbara, uh, so many people, again, those who did not know Charles Ogletree, uh, may not realize just how significant he was to a whole generation of black lawyers. And, I mean, he meant everything to the National Bar Association. We just ended our 98th annual convention in Minneapolis just yesterday. Last night was the uh, last uh, day of the conference. And I want to tell you that I remember back in Houston when he gave his farewell speech. We were all so shocked. We said, what is a farewell speech? Why is Charles doing this? And he announced uh, that he had, uh, you know, early <clears throat> on Alzheimer's. And he came up to me afterwards, Roland, and my heart just cracked because he said, Barbara, don't ever forget me. He says, I might forget you, but don't ever forget me. And I just want people to know that without Charles 
ogle tree or tree as we love to call him. There is no Me Too movement. There's no sexual harassment movement because his representation of Anita Hill and elevating that issue was his work. And he convinced her to really use that whole uh, formation, that whole formulation of talking about sexual harassment. People don't understand that without Charles Ogletree, the entire modern, what we call criminal law movement would not, criminal justice in the law movement would not exist. He formulated that. People don't understand that, you know, he loved to talk about education. His representation of the Tulsa uh, massacre victims was incredible. I mean, he was par excellence, everything we want a black lawyer to be. And when he talks about Charles Hamilton Houston, he didn't talk about him. He walked in his footsteps. I will never forget this amazing man. His legacy lives on. The National Bar could not be what it is today without him. He helped shape a generation, generations of powerful, amazing black lawyers who wanted to be just like him. Yeah. Tanya, um, he taught at Harvard, but uh, his impact went beyond Harvard. Uh, he was sought after by so many people, whether they were other students, but also professors at other law schools. He was simply brilliant. Um, he was a, a brilliant educator, a brilliant activist. Um, he was generous. I had the opportunity to work closely with him during my time at Harvard Law School. And everyone from the facilities workers, to people he saw on the street who asked him for help. He was a public servant and a leader servant. Um, and for him to be able to span the years and also kind of the, 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 the breadth of, you know, those who are known and those who are not known and be humble in all spaces and be respected in all spaces and be present in all spaces. I mean, I have a very heavy heart because I wanted to be the kind of professor that he is. He loved his students to understanding as Maya Angelou talks about. And he told us, you have a responsibility to your people. You are not here for yourself or by yourself. And I expect you to do for your people what others have done to make it possible for you to be in these spaces. Yep. And I, I will miss him, but his oh, legacy will live yep. on in all the people that he served. Barbara, he availed himself to so many folks. We talk about a lot of those state of black America discussions Tavis Smiley had, but there was, whether it was National Bar Association, Congressional Black Caucus uh, Foundation, I mean, on and on and on. I mean, he was ubiquitous. He was all, I mean, if it was a black event, it's a good bet uh, Charles Ogletree would be showing up. And he would be showing out because he would bring such, you know, brilliance to every discussion. And he had that broad range of vision. I mean, he wasn't just narrow minded at all. You know, I just recall some of the conversations that he had with Randall Robinson, uh, who also, you know, was recently departed. But he, you know, was at that forefront of the reparations movement. Uh, he was, you know, really out there. He helped so many of us to expand our thinking. And what he loved to tell me, you know, when we would talk sometimes he would just say Barbara remember we came from the housing projects you know he was very very that was part of his humility is that he remembered you know our origins and he never wanted to get far away from the people from whom he came and that he saw the brilliance of our future. He saw the bright lights of, you know, these new legal minds and he encouraged people so much. And there was no room he did not walk into that he didn't light up. He was amazing. We are so grateful, you know, to his legacy and we will carry forth, uh, 
uh, in his name. You can imagine um, rolling all the events that are going to be held to pay tribute to his remarkable legacy because he, you know, I, I will never forget him strolling out on those PBS series, the ultimate consummate, amazing uh, host. I mean, he was everything and all of us just sat there and we were like, oh my God, look, he takes it to another level every single time. His defense, uh, Bill Gates, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, Henry Louis Gates, during the quote, uh, you know, whole incident with the police, you know, uh, raiding his home and then arresting him. I mean, Charles was just there. He was there. He was always present. He didn't waste a minute of his time on this earth. And we're grateful to him because none of us uh, could have been who we are without Charles. Every single one of us, he rubbed off on us. He left an influence, a, uh, you know, attained and deep into our souls, uh, you know, based on his inspiration. Love him. Always. Forever. Tanya, uh, Tanya, your final comments. Um, you know, I'm a leaf on his tree. Uh, you know, he poured into others and instilled in us a sense of responsibility. And so, as Barbara said, like our, his legacy will live on in the work that we do. Um, and he he laid the foundation for a bright future for black people around the world. And it is now our job to pick up the mantle and continue on with the work. Barbara, Tanya, we both appreciate you sharing your thoughts uh, regarding uh, the passing of Charles Ogletree. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Congresswoman Terry Sewell of Alabama uh, studied under uh, Charles Ogletree at uh, Harvard uh, law school, and uh, I was moderating uh, the town hall today um, at Congressional Black Caucus uh, with the Congressional Black Caucus Institute town hall taking place at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, and I have had an opportunity for her to share some words about her mentor, Charles Ogletree. So, Congresswoman, uh, just your thoughts about the great uh, No Chuck Ogletree. Yes. Um, what can I say? He was, uh, today we lost a legal giant, um, a giant among giants. Um, this is a man who selflessly gave up his time and energy um, to all of us as law students. He made every one of us feel as if we were his best student. He supported us in our dreams and our aspirations, and he was always there to pick us up if we didn't uh, if we didn't meet those aspirations. Um, from President Obama to myself, so many of those of us who are in elected office wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for the um, support and the um, encouragement of Charles Ogletree. Um, I think he had the best. Uh, email listserv. It was nochuck at AOL.com. And when he put it out on the circuit that someone he believed in was running for public office, the money started pouring in. Um, that's who he was as a person. He was all about not just his own personal advancement, but the advancement of all of us. And he was um, relentless in his belief in black excellence. And I am just forever indebted to him as my law professor, as my mentor, and as my friend. Charles Ogletree was 70 years old. I want to bring in my panel right now, joining us uh, on today's show, uh, Matt Manny, uh, civil rights attorney uh, out of Corpus Christi. We also have Michael Imhotep, host of the African History Network show, Kelly Bethea, uh, communications strategist. Glad to have all three of you here. Matt, um, I want to start with you. Um, if you are a black lawyer and you did not know who Charles Ogletree was, your black card probably needs to be uh, revoked. Yeah, you're not you're not paying attention, um, you know, and I'm so glad that you had the sisters on, especially the the professor at Georgia State, because what I think, um, you know, Professor Ogletree embodied, I never had the pleasure of meeting him, but is the responsibility that I have tried to explain that I feel as a black lawyer. I think um, it's so important that we understand how important it is to work on behalf of the people. And I tell people, you know, my law license is our law license. Now, obviously, I'm the one practicing, but there's a sense of responsibility. And when you look at somebody like Professor, Professor Ogletree, Charles Ogletree, you know, you have not only a titan, but you have someone who never allowed his success to sever 
him from the people. And I think that's the important, you know, thing to take from this is that one, you can make such important inroads on behalf of, of your people with being the best at what you do. But beyond that, you can never forget for whom you do it. And that's the lesson that um, I learned by, you know, just his legal uh, titan uh, nature and just the fact that he pioneered so many things that, you know, we're still talking about today. And particularly from the standpoint of where he did it, because I don't think that there is, um, you know, we have to discuss basically the fact that it's not lost in us that he was teaching at Harvard, went to some of the best universities in the country and was spearheading some of the most complex and uh, interesting legal theories and legal uh, philosophies from that perspective. So I just think it's important to, if you're a black lawyer, to recognize not only the standard of excellence that he set, but the standard of responsibility that we all should aspire to uphold. Because I think we're duty bound by virtue of our opportunity to make sure we foster betterment for our people. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Michael, um um, Matt made said something. I think Barbara said the same thing in terms of how he availed himself to the public, and that's the thing. I mean, he he would do black owned radio. Uh, he would mm-hmm. be speaking to various groups. I mean, he was a lot of places. He was not just sitting here being in the rarefied air of the halls um, uh, of Harvard. He was out there among the people engaged in many of the prominent issues of the day involving African-Americans. Yeah. And and not only that, but when he talked, you didn't have to consult a dictionary to understand what the hell he was saying either. Like some of these other um, you like some of these pseudo intellectuals you have out here. Um, But I I remember Charles Ogletree um, in different aspects, uh, probably most prominently. Uh, for his work dealing with uh, suing on behalf of reparations, his work seeking to uh, get reparations for the survivors of the Tulsa race massacre. Uh, He was in the the 2008 documentary called Before They Die, uh, which is about the Tulsa race massacre Mm -hmm. and uh, fighting for justice for the survivors. Um, He also was suing for um, uh, trying to get reparations for slavery as well outside of the Tulsa race massacre. Um, He was an attorney for Tupac Shakur uh, before Tupac was killed. Uh, He was also uh, now people remember him on the national stage as well. Um, He was part of the legal team for Anita Hill during the Clarence Thomas confirmation hearings. Uh, So there's so many different aspects uh, in which he was in the national spotlight. So this is uh, a tremendous loss. You know, I didn't go to I didn't go to law school like my two colleagues here. I was supposed to go to law school, but ended up going to business school. But I was still very aware of uh, Charles Ogletree. And we also know, you know, he was lost prematurely, but also Johnny Cochran who also was um, trying to sue for reparations for African-Americans. Johnny Cochran was a giant who was lost prematurely as well. So uh, I think there's a lot can be learned uh, from Charles Ogletree and understanding, uh, even though he uh, was a law professor at Harvard, he was from the people and for the people, okay? And he also taught us to really understand the power of law, why it's important for us to understand law as well, not just history. So this is a tremendous loss. Um, Kelly, 2016, he was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's, passes away uh, just seven years later. Um, It was a couple, it was 2018 uh, where um, it sparked a huge concern for many of us um, when he went for a walk um, and and was missing. I remember, um, I remember um, probably... Shortly after he made the announcement, hey, t- we're supposed to have him on Tom Jordan Morning Show. Uh, and I remember talking to him and he said, hey, Roland, he said, not a problem. He said, call me at this number. Uh, I'll be walking the dog. Um, and we called and he never answered. He never answered. Um, and that's when, you know, it, w- it was real. Uh, and it, to lose this unbelievable mind just seven years after being diagnosed uh, with early onset Alzheimer's uh, just tells you how devastating uh, this uh, disease is. Yeah, Alzheimer's itself is just 
completely unforgiving. It does not see race. It doesn't see gender. It doesn't see brilliance. Um, emphasis on the brilliance that is Professor Ogletree here. Um, a lot of, I heard, you know, everybody giving their tributes and whatnot, but what I didn't hear just yet is how he was, he was, might as well have been a DC native. You know, he, he was Mr. Legal DC here in Washington, DC and the DMV at large, right? Um, he was on the board of trustees for uh, UDC, University of, uh, District of Columbia. For those who don't know, that is an HBCU. So while he was a professor at Harvard, he was still giving back to HBCUs, which just uh, goes to show you just how much heart he had. Like everyone has said, he wasn't uppity and elitist with his education, with his brilliance, with his mind. He always gave back. He always paid it forward. And he always made a way to cultivate the next generation of minds, as we see with President Obama, or former President Obama and uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama, as we see with the legacy of, of Black attorneys who have come out of Harvard since his tenure there. So um, Alzheimer's doesn't see that. Alzheimer's doesn't care about that. And I think that's what makes this even more heartbreaking, the fact that he was relatively young upon his passing. And I've no doubt that if it wasn't for this disease, he would have so much more to give. Um, like everyone has said, it is a great loss and he will be sorely missed. But the legacy that he has left behind in black lawyers, such as myself, such as Matt, such as the legacy, because um, that's really what it is a legacy of brilliance that he has left behind. Um, he will live on. You know, it's about this. Uh, it's always about around this time again, when they have their uh, institute on Martha's Vineyard. Um, I mean, he was there every single year. I mean, he had a home there. He was always there. Uh, and, and I'll tell you all this. I'll leave you with the story here. Um, uh, Charles loved uh, to go stripe, striped bass fishing. Um, and um, when I was there, he would, be, he would be telling me these stories about, oh, Roland, he said, we, we can go striped bass fishing. And I was like, Charles, look, bro, I don't fish. Okay. I play golf, uh, and uh, there was an annual golf tournament uh, for Ken Williams, named for Ken Williams. And for folks who don't know, Ken Williams was the brother who worked at Polaroid, who actually was the founder of the Polaroid Revolutionary Workers uh, Organization. And they were the ones who um, first really launched the um, movement uh, to withhold economic dollars because of apartheid. And uh, so Charles and I, he loved golf too. Uh, we played in the golf tournament together. Uh, and he would talk about, oh, how he loved Mother's Vineyard and you could just be driving down the street and folk just be walking. It was like being back, back in the days in the country. You just give somebody a ride. They would hop, I would hop, I would hop, uh, they would hop house to house. Uh, but he was all, I mean, he loved fishing and he would catch so much striped bass that he would just take fish and clean it and drop it off at other people's houses and give them fish. Uh, so I have so many memories, uh, of Charles Ogletree interviewing him many times, um, seeing him, hugging him, embracing him, talking with him, uh, truly was indeed a brilliant scholar. Michelle Roberts, former executive director of the uh, N NBA Players Association. She was the one who sent me a text this afternoon. Uh, when I was at the NABJ Hall of Fame lunch and notified me about him becoming an ancestor. And so uh, it is certainly sad news. He will be greatly missed. Uh, and we just wanted to definitely take some time and pay tribute to him on today's show.